Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing another Bible study episode. We'll be diving into John chapter 18. Today we have some special guests. We have Brother Jave, Brother Ryan, Brother Gio, Brother Nate, Brother John, and we have a, a very special guest making his YouTube debut. Coming all the way from the Lee's house. We have Chip with us today, guys. Wave to the camera, Chip. Amen, amen, amen. Today we're going to start off with an opening prayer by Brother Nate. Then we're going to be leading by the minister, Gio. You're wonderful and worthy to be praised, Lord Jesus. It's in your name we come and give you honor and all the praise for all the things that you've done and continue to do for us in our lives. Father, as um, we go into this time today, I pray that you open up the scriptures to us and open up your beautiful things, um, the revelations from your law, Bless the discussion. May it continue to be edifying as we continue to journey on, Lord Jesus, in your word and continue to grow in the grace and the knowledge of your precious name, the Lord Jesus the Christ. We give you thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, after saying these things, Jesus crossed the Kidron Valley with his disciples and entered a grove of olive trees. Judas the betrayer knew this place because Jesus had often gone there with his disciples. The leading priests and Pharisees had given Judas a contingent of Roman soldiers and temple guards to accompany him. Now with blazing torches, lanterns and weapons, they arrived at the olive grove. Jesus fully realized all that was going to happen to him, so he stepped forward to meet them. Who are you looking for, he asked. Jesus the Nazarene, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. As Jesus, as Jesus said, he, they all drew back and fell to the ground. Once more, he asked them, who are you looking for? And again, they replied, Jesus the Nazarene. I told you that I am he, Jesus said. And since I am the one you want, let these others go. He did this to fulfill his own statement. I did not lose a single one of those you have given me. Then Simon Peter drew a sword and slashed off the right ear of Malchus, the high priest's slave. But Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into, this, into its sheath. Shall I not drink from the cup of suffering the father has given me? So the soldiers, their commanding officer, and the temple guards arrested Jesus and tied him up. First, they took him to Annas, since he was the, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest at that time. Caiaphas was the one who had told the other Jewish leaders, it's better that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter, follow, Simon Peter followed Jesus, as did another of the disciples. That other disciple was acquainted with the high priest. So he was allowed to enter the high priest's courtyard with Jesus. Peter had to stay outside the gate. Then the disciples who knew the high priest spoke to the woman watching at the gate and she let Peter in. The woman asked Peter, you're not one of that man's disciples, are you? No, he said, I am not. Because it was cold, the household servants and the guards had made a charcoal fire. They stood around it, warming themselves and Peter stood with them, warming himself. It says, after saying these things, Jesus crossed the Kidron Valley with his disciples and entered a grove of olive trees. What what things are they talking about? It says, after these things, saying these things. Oh, remember the last scripture he was giving them the rundown of how he's going to uh, be sacrificed for his sin? And it, uh, in the last chapter, it was a prayer between uh, Jesus and God. So he, he started speaking to them in plain sight and revealing to them exactly what's going to happen. And as you said, he was praying on behalf of the disciples and the rest of the believers in the world. And likewise, he started to pray for the world as well. So they found those set themselves in this grove of olive trees. And Judas shows up with the Roman soldiers. And now it's time for them to, I guess, take Jesus captive, right? And find a way to 
get him crucified or I guess bring him up on guilty charges. Um, I think one thing that stuck out for me early in like the first couple of verses is that it says in verse two, it says Judas the betrayer knew this place because Jesus had often gone there with his disciples. For me, it just stuck out to me like, do we have that, that place where we go with Jesus often to be with him? Like, is there like that, that one physical place that we have? Like, all right, this is my place that I know when I get here, this is just like, it's just me and God. Like for Moses, he went on the Mount, right? Um, for the high priest, they went inside the tabernacle, right? Um, what's that place for me? I don't know if you guys have any specific place that you that you go to to just be with be alone with Jesus and spend quality time with him. That was like one of the first things that stuck out for me. Well, this table that I'm at right now in my room is my place. I, I usually have my Bible open, uh, my study book, and this is where I fellowship. I do my prayers. I meditate. This is basically my mini sanctuary. So now you have you have this contingent of Roman soldiers or a group of Roman Roman soldiers, right? The temple guards, and they're coming to get Jesus with torches, torches, um, lanterns, and weapons, as if Jesus was some type of like crazy lunatic criminal with guns and 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 horses and chariots, and but he was just a regular man, and so they came to get him as though they were coming for a full army, right? And, and then another thing that stood out to me I was re as I was reading was it says, Jesus fully realized all that was going to happen to him. So he stepped forward. He says, who are you looking for? And he said, and he said, uh, Jesus the Nazarene. Or in King James where it says, Jesus of Nazareth. And as we were reading through John and journeying through John, I don't think that Jesus ever declared who he was out of all the titles when they ask, like, are you this? Are you that? Are you this? Are you? And he was just like, I think this is the first time from my memory anyway, that he said, he finally said, I am he. When they asked, was he the son of God? When they asked, was he the Messiah? He's like, who do you say that I am? Right. He always like flipped this, flipped the question onto the person asking the question. But I think this is the first time he actually declared who he was. But then again, look at the title that they're asking for, Jesus of Nazareth. That's not declaring his glory. That's not, that's not, I guess, revealing who he is um, from a heavenly perspective, but mostly from an earthly perspective. This is Jesus, and this is where he was born, right? This is his hood, Nazareth. And this is the first time I think I saw him say, I, I am he. So I think that was like an interesting thing that um that stood out to me. And it, it looks and I found out why he did that, right? In the next couple of verses, he says, um, he did that so that the scripture could be fulfilled, that all that the Father have given him, those 12 disciples, none of them will be lost. But then verse six really blew my mind. It was just like, they all drew back as soon as he said, I am he. And they all fell to the ground. And I'm like, why? Like, why, why are they falling to the ground? If like, they all came ready to go, like, torches and lanterns and, and 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 weapons and everything and all he said was i am he oh snap like they just all you know retreated and fell down to the ground definitely definitely something that that stood out to me and i was just trying to figure out why is it that i just want to jump they, in on that yeah go ahead go for it go for it so uh as you were you know just reading that um what just hit me was this you mentioned how they came um, with for him as if he was some high criminal, you know, and sometimes the way that people come for you is based off of what somebody told them about you. They don't even know you, but they come for you according to the description of what somebody else was telling them about you, the whole story and all that. You know, somebody could, oh, this guy, he's so rude. And he's so, ah, blah, 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 blah. So when they come for you, they already prepared for that. They guard it up and everything like that. They come ready based off of what somebody else's account and experience 
Right. And so Judas very well could have told him like, hey, I seen this guy do some stuff. Though. This guy got power. Like, I mean, he he opening blind eyes. He walking on water and stuff. I mean, he he turning water into wine. Like you, you got to come strapped. You know, when you when you see this guy. So that's probably why they came, you know, with a whole army and everything ready for him. When he said, I am he that. Oh, snap. I didn't expect him to be right there. You know, that could be why they, they probably yeah. was ready to really take on a deity. That That's that's pretty good. Like the. The account that Judas potentially gave them uh, about Jesus could have very well caused them to strap up like that. Um, I just want to know how powerful of the word he is that when he said that they fell down to the ground and he, like they drew back and fell down. But I, I, I guess Jesus continued on with, with what was going to happen. He says, once more, he asked them, who are you looking for? And again, they replied, Jesus, the Nazarene. He said, I told you that I am he, Jesus said. And since I am the one you want, let these others go. And he did this to fulfill the scripture. Now, I'm probably pulling, right? But maybe, maybe, just maybe, when it says they drew back and fell to the ground, I don't know if that's on, you know, some every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. I don't know. I'm probably just pulling. But maybe one of you you guys can help me out with that one. Um, but he he did what he had to do to fulfill the scripture, right? So that all that God has given him, those disciples, that none of them will be lost. Um, and then you have Simon Peter just ready to ride out for one of his, you know, one of his homies. He pulls out this knife, the sword, and he cuts the air off of one of the um, one of the high priest slaves. Jesus tells him, no, 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 we're not going to go out like that, right? We're going to fulfill the scripture, and I'm going to do what the Father has called me to do. So I, I think for us, how, like, I think this shows how essential um, obedience is in this walk. No matter how large of a cup of suffering that we have to endure, that we have to drink from. Jesus did it unto death. And I think that that is like, like Nate said uh, a couple of weeks ago, he said, Jesus is the blueprint. And if we need to, if we need to know how to walk in this life of faith, we need to open up the blueprint and we need to literally follow it step by step. He says, Shall I not drink from the cup of offer of uh, the cup of suffering the Father has given me? Um, I think I was reading in it might have been like Tony Evans's book um, called The Promise. He was talking about um, the greater the the I think it was like the greater the call, the greater the step of obedience is um, the the larger the blessing and it's not like we're doing things because we want to be blessed but we're doing things because of our love for the father you know our love for jesus um and so it's just like here we see i, I want to say here we see like the christ not so much the jesus we see the christ portion of jesus christ saying that i must take on this cup because I believe later on we'll read that he says, you know, Father, take this cup from me. And then we see the Jesus rising up, like the flesh portion, portion, the human portion of him. But then again, immediately Christ kicks in and he's just like, nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. So for me, this stuck out like super duper heavy on the obedience tip. Like, what has God called us to do? And it doesn't have to be some grand, huge thing. It could just be like, I was waking up this morning, like, and 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 taking heed to Ezra's call, like, wake up, eight o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, and let's read, <laughs> right? And 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 you continue to be obedient. I'm gonna continue to use Ezra. He's gonna continue to to be the 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 uh, the iron that's gonna sharpen you guys' as iron, and and I'm gonna continue to bless you. I think the last time we got together, powerful, right? Like God was just pouring into all of us and we were able to share and sharpen each other. So 
day by day, just seek to be obedient moment by moment. And, and I think that as we continue to make our passion to obey God, then I think that the Holy Spirit will pour into us and use us so that we can ultimately glorify the Father. I wanted to jump in, I guess, real quick too. Um, answering Gio's first question, I think it actually is one of those situations um, as far as the that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. And um, even going forward with what you're saying, I think obedience also confirms and affirms your identity um, as well. Because Jesus was able to speak with such authority as far as who he knew he was, it, it just knowing who he is and how he spoke, you have to actually stand back. You know, when they first came uh, with Judas, they came, you know, hey, we're coming. We're coming for you. We're coming for you. Who are you? And he says with boldness, I am Jesus, it will take you back. I mean, even think of ourselves in the natural when it comes to you know, God, where are you? And God says, I'm here. And you know, you open your heart to that opportunity of the Holy Spirit speaking to you. You can't just stand that brings you to a place of, okay, whoa, I called on God or I sought God and he's here. And so I think of that when I think of this, when it goes what you're speaking about, uh, and even looking at that passage and um kind of just seeing it with fresh eyes with even hearing, you know, like, who are you looking for? And even Jesus speaking with, again, with the authority, you know, when he says, well, well, I'm the one, I'm the one. And uh, I think sometimes when I look at that scripture, it's not just even saying the, uh, of course, we get, get the little going way too much. And I know I'm gonna reach with this one, you know, and whatever translation is, it got the capitals. It's like the I am, I am. And, you know, it always makes you think about Exodus 3, you know, when God said, you know, I am that I am. And if, and it probably is more so because we we are more so in the word. But when you hear that there's a definitive I am, it, it solidifies something within your spirit. It's just like, okay, there's no question. There's no doubt. You are. It's not a matter of I think you're Jesus or I think I'm Jesus. I am Jesus. And because I am Jesus, you're not just confronting Jesus, the man. You're also confronting Jesus, the divine. You're also confronting Jesus, the deity and all that that deity holds. So even in that moment, I see it as those men are coming to the Lord knowing they might not understand they're about to take him and he get crucified and he raised back up, but they know that they're stepping to a power that's greater than them. And that maybe in that particular moment, they have to acknowledge that they're not the supreme power. I mean, in um, usual instances, say if, you know, here in 2021, if they wanted to come on this Zoom and say, hey, I'm from the priest, uh, you need to tell, do what I say, do. And we say, okay. But if we walk in that authority and that identity, they have to fall back. And even sometimes I take it as an application point for all of us, walk in our identity, walk in obedience. And I think sometimes what helps us uh, walk in disobedience is sometimes we forget who we are. And so we have to tap into who our identity is in Christ, from Christ, that we can do what Christ will bid us to do through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then, you know, we can walk in love. Because I always like the, I always like the joke about Peter and he slashed the ears, but you know, the Lord moved with such great love that in his authority, I'm gonna show you who I am. This is the present that you're coming to. Let me show you what's going on. And regardless of what Judas told them beforehand, truth always trumps everything else. And Jesus really has some different type of power. He just picked the air and was like, ah, right? she's done. He even, he even think no needles, no, no, no um cloth, nothing. He was just like, you good? Walk it off. It's spit in the mud and be like, Pfft. that's it. And, and, and you and it's like it's crazy because I'm thinking like, just imagine if we were there and we saw this man like, like we were the Roman soldiers and we saw this man just pick up an air just like you wouldn't think to like hold on like maybe this guy is about that life like maybe this guy is the guy that like we probably shouldn't be laying hands and feet on right now like. And it's just like they just kind of just brushed it off. And 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 I, I want to attribute it to the the position of their hearts. Maybe it was just it was so hard that they and they were so caught up in the moment. Like they were just, I'm just I'm here to do my job. I'm here to just capture this man and bring him in for justice. That's it. But they didn't stop to see what Jesus was showing them, his authority, his power, his ability. 
um, his identity, who he was, as as Brother John just said, is just I don't, I don't know how you just look beyond that. I think you know, just, I think we all kind of have that little thing in us at times, though. You know, because if we go back to to children of Israel, I mean, they're seeing pillars of fire, you know, right in front of them. They're seeing Red Sea parted right in front of them. They're seeing manna coming down from heaven, quail right in front of them. And yet somehow they still find themselves, you know, chasing after uh, their idols and, and really following their, their own flesh, you know, um, their own desires and whatever um, that temporary, you know, uh, fix was, was became the, the focus for them in that moment, no matter what miracle, you know, God was doing right with them, walking with them, literally, you know, and, and, and sometimes we get there too, where, you know, God is blessing, God is working in our life. And sometimes you run into that moment where it looks like, I, I know you did that last week, but somehow I'm in my flesh right now, you know, and whatever I'm into right now, just seem like I'm just going to go with it, you know? And I think with those Roman soldiers, you know, they were more obedient to the government than what was happening right in front of them divinely, you know, and that's probably why they were into that. They're like, all right, I know I just seen this, but you know, I'm going to do what, uh, what Caesar and, and all of them are doing right now. I mean, the thing is too, um, I think Jesus illustrated something very important. He showed what he could have done if he really wanted to because of the power that he possessed if you just look at that instance in the scripture, if you look at it just literally, okay, what about him makes him fall? It, it, it was probably the same thing that knocked Saul off his high horse in the book of Acts. The great glory of God, the power of his voice. I, I believe that definitely could have been that same thing, you know? Uh, so that moment, it, you, we read it now and we say, okay, so, why didn't they change their mind? I still think because everything was happening so fast in that moment, those that knew what they came to do, they were going to be steadfast in doing what they came to do, you know, despite of what happened, was going on around them. You know, I think of that song, you know, I grew up, I grew up hearing this song about he could have called on 10,000 angels to destroy the world and come set him free. The, the song came to mind because I was like, you know what's crazy? He really, that was the beginning of showing he could have did all of that. Yeah, he prayed to Jesus. He prayed to God, um, his father, the chapter before and said, listen, you know what this cup is? Let's do it another way. He had the power to make it another way. But as um, Gio was mentioning, showing that restraint, even in suffering because of obedience, his obedience to, to God Trump, what he could have, he could have finished the job and did the same thing to the rest of the Roman soldiers. And it wouldn't have been under the great majestic power. It would have been under judgment. It would have been a wrap. But he showed the restraint. Peter didn't. But Jesus showed the restraint. Je um, he, uh, one of the other texts that talk about that instance he warns Peter that, listen, those that live by the sword are going to die by it. And um, I think it's crazy because even in the world when all those things happening, Jesus finds a way to teach a lesson. Don't live by the means that can take you out of here. Be obedient. Just, just I'm not saying don't be passive, don't, don't play the punk, but when it comes to certain tasks and God's saying, this, the suffering is a part of the journey. The season of suffering is a part of the journey. Just obey him and trust him because there's times where you will have to speak up for yourself. There are times when you will have to, you, that it's okay to be Peter. Not this case. He's trying to show, I could have did that and I could have did worse. Mm -mm. Obey the task that's at hand from the father. That's good stuff on, on both sides. Like, us getting so caught up and, and not seeing the glory of God before us. And and then it's okay to be Peter. <laughs> so, you know, we, we learned about Peter on uh, the last time, like you said, um, 
like we're gonna find out him denying Christ three times, but then his first sermon saved three thousand. Right? It's all a part of the journey. Um, and so we we I'm pretty sure we all have our Peter moments, whether we're chopping people down with our words or you know um, potentially even you know denying Christ. Like and and when and he tells us to do something and we go the opposite way or he tells us not to do something, and again we go the opposite direction, but it's all a part of the growth process, right? Us learning Christ, learning ourselves in Christ. And then I think, like you said, it's all a part of the journey. Um, and I, again, like I can count, I can continue to just say thank you for the blueprint because we would be completely lost without this, right? I can only imagine how difficult it was for the earlier children of Christ who didn't necessarily have these scriptures. It's like, what type of relationship that would have been like? Like, what would they have to reference to, to know what to do? You know, granted, they had leaders, but I mean, how many of us are respecting the leaders that follow that, that we have to fall under? You know, it's just. It is, but thank God for the blueprint. We're able to continue learning, continue to uh, have a great understanding. And God bless us with people in our life, our brothers and our sisters, not only in Christ, but outside of Christ, that they're able to help us with certain stuff. Christian related, you got your yeah, your yeah, yeah, people and God outside that you could go to everybody else. But God made sure that He um not only suit us with a blueprint, but suit us with people too to help us to where we can get on this Bible study and ask a question like, what do you mean he denied him three times? What does that re represent? What is the significance of that? Have you denied God three times before? Just asking all of the those questions that come to your head to be able to have a better understanding. Also, as you said that, um, another thing about that moment that jumped out to me, um, something that um, I remembered reading from a commentary a while ago, why that place, even when you were talking about that earlier, I wanted to jump in, but you were flowing good, Gio. Um, something about that place. Um, gardens are very powerful places in scripture um it was in the garden of eden you saw the great co first conflict and it's in it's in the garden literally of gethsemane where you're seeing the last conflict i almost feel like that was even the part where you see the the the, the wrestling of doing god's will it's in reverse i know that was last week's chapter but that was something that stuck out to me just now in reading it again, that man, the garden is such a significant place because it was the same garden where mankind was tempted. The first Adam was tempted and he failed. The second Adam was tempted and he obeyed full on through. The, the blessing of obedience, um, the garden, um, it, it, that, that was so powerful to me. I didn't want to jump in on that. I, I just said I'm digging a little bit deeper when you were talking about that place. And sometimes it's it, you, the, the geography does matter. You know, we live in a time where obviously because of the, the pandemic in the current state, we don't have that place, that meaning place like the, the safety of church, for example. But some would say it was the building that restricted me. It restricted my ability to really be all God taught me to be. You see what I'm saying? But now we're looking at it as like, okay, I don't have the luxury of the building. I don't have the, the place of confrontation. Will I still be obedient to do God's will? You know, um, it, the, the, those things stood out to me, you know? And I think as you journey on and read through the scripture, you um, even going back to Ezra's point, they didn't have the, they literally had to do this thing by faith. Their, their story was happening in, in real time by faith. As the early church moved on, it was by faith. They had to go by what Jesus had just told them to. At most, I know I'm jumping ahead of myself, at most, you see this man, Stephen, preaching from Moses, but he's still finding a way to point to Jesus. But all those things wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the garden. The garden was where mankind fell, but it's in the garden where mankind now can see the redemptive plan of God. That, that was my last piece, sir. Hey, thank you. Thank you for holding out. You should have cut me off when you, <laughs> you 
So they cut me off when you thought about that. But that's that's yeah, that's I think as I'm 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 journeying through the old testament again, like like I'm I'm determined to get through it this time because I, I I always get to like like after like the first five books and then I was like I can't do it no more it's too much but I'm, I'm gonna get through it I'm I'm starting to see exactly what you just did like Jesus fulfilling what should have gone on or what it should what should have transpired in the beginning um I got I know we didn't get there yet but I I, I just it was also like brought to my attention about um like the Passover, how the lamb was slain on the Passover and the blood was put on the doorpost. Likewise, Jesus was slain on the Passover and his blood was shed. And it was like a Passover for us. And I was just like, yo, <laughs> it's like, like it's the, the book is just, it's so well put together. But I thank you for bringing that up, bro. Appreciate that. I did not even make that connection in my head because I know about both of those stories and I've known about them for years, but I've never connected them and see how they both compare and the significance of it. And going back to what I was saying earlier, that's why God blesses us with our peers to identify and give us the knowledge of things that we're not aware of. Uh, but Ryan, you were going to speak? No, nah, man, I was just going to say that's that's incredible, you know, and, and it just speaks to, you know, to and we, we take that and apply it to our life. You know, how are we man managing our gardens? You know, the garden is the place, you know, obviously where the decisions are made, you know, and, and gardens are things are planted and, and things are uprooted and, and whatever grows out of that garden is what you sustain yourself off of. You know, and what we feed our not just ourselves, but our family and our lives and our livelihood, our produce, you know. And so, you know, it just speaks to how we manage those moments of decision, um, because from those moments, you know, the rest of our life and the rest of our um, our uh, prosperity even depends on that. And and that just just that's a great vivid picture right there painted right there. I, I love that connection, you know, of, of the garden of Eden to even this grove, this, 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 this olive grove, you know, into Garden of Gethsemane, that just speaks to that completely. Amen. Nate is always holding out on some good gems, bro. I mean, and he always just wait to the end and then just drop them on everybody. <laughs> but, um, I, I thank God for that. T timing is everything, right? Um, and so where are, where are we? Uh, so Peter does his thing in verse 11, um, verse 12 says, so the soldiers, their commanding officer and the temple guards arrested Jesus and tied him up. Oh, I just realized that. Did it say that Jesus put the guy's ear back in this book? Not in this song. I think it's in Mark or Luke where it actually you, you see that the Cop. rest of the story. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I just realized that we we were uh I guess from reading the other books, we know that that's what happened, but um that's I mean maybe we could talk about that too, the different accounts of the gospels and and, and figure out why they are the way they are, but um yeah, so verse 12 says, so the soldiers, their commanding officer and the temple guards arrested Jesus and tied him up. First, they took him to Annas, uh, since he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest at that time. Caiaphas was the one who had told the other Jewish leaders, it's better that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, as did another of the disciples. Um, that other disciple was acquainted with the high priest so he was allowed to enter the high priest's courtyard with Jesus. Do they ever reveal who this other disciple is and then the other gospels? Do you know? Not to my knowledge, not off the top of my head. Okay. I, I was reading this. I was like, what other disciple like are they talking about, referring to? But okay. Um since Peter had to stay outside the gate, 
Then the disciples who knew the high priest spoke to the woman watching at the gate and she let Peter in. The woman asked Peter, you're not one of that man's disciples, are you? No, he said, I am not because it was cold. The household servants and the guards had made a charcoal fire. They stood around it warming themselves and Peter stood with them warming himself for the high priest. Seems like it. Yeah. I just want to know why I just find it interesting that the other disciple, right? Sometimes some situations miss you or miss them and land on you. Hmm. Why wasn't he questioned about being a disciple? That, a yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to like read it again and see whose disciple he was. Like, was he Jesus' disciple? No, I, I know for sure, if you read literally, that's what was happening. I just think what, I, maybe his affiliation, his connection. Um, I just read a commentary that was saying that it could have been the author himself that they were referring it to. Been John. Yeah. That it was John. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm. So I just literally, like, when you asked, I just I decided to dig up my commentary real quick. I was like, wait a minute. Was it John himself? And I think you know, some some commentaries do say it was literally him, that it was him, it, he was connected, and affiliated. But it's you, you're right, Ryan. It's interesting that John didn't come under question. I, I but I think that was just the divine um, wisdom right. of the writing of the book, because remember, okay, literally, John, this author was considered the one that Jesus loved. So naturally, John was not ashamed of owning his relationship. I think the shift happened because this is now another fulfillment that's happened. Now, you, you know, like how certain if you follow certain series and certain shows, like after the first couple of seasons where the action is, I'm more of an action person. So it's funny. I was talking about this um, with uh, friend, um, my cousins and, uh, and my siblings last night about how crazy like Chicago PD, because that's the show I watch, how it evolved. And um, you see along the way, you get to know each of the characters, but you don't lose the essence of the overall story. And I think that's kind of something what was happening here. Now you're getting a little spotlight, a li little spotlight on, on, on Peter, um, literally, and you're seeing another fulfillment of the scripture. But it doesn't take away from the overall story. Hope that made sense. Yeah, I think it was. I'm looking at 15. I think it definitely was a disciple of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that he had a certain acquaintance with the high priest. And so you said your commentary said that that might have been John himself. That was yeah, the one that's the author of this, of this book. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. so, but so as he, I said, you won't. And I was just answering Ryan's point. Because he loved Jesus so much, if he was questioned, he probably didn't deny, but this shifts the perspective now to Peter, because you know he was the disciple that Jesus loved to the point where he was laying his head on his bosom, and the, this to show the camaraderie, the depth of closeness. So I don't think John, I, I mean, because we're reading it now, but you could tell that John was devout through and through to the story of Jesus and the following him. This was Peter's testing point. Just my two cents on that. Yeah, he, he's definitely working some things out through Peter. Like from the moment he chose him and said that, you know, you'll be the rock, you know, like that I, I the foundation of the church, right? You'll you'll be the one who, who builds the church. And I think that he had to put him through certain scenarios to convict him of certain things that were inside of him that needed to be worked out of him. And I and I think this was definitely one of those things. Like so like you said, that that could be a very valid point that now we're highlighting this character uh, of the overall story without losing the overall essence of the story. Peter had to stay outside the gate, verse 16. And then the disciple, let's just say, for example, let's say it's John, right? Then John, who knew the high priest, spoke to the woman watching at the gate. And then she let Peter in. The woman asked Peter, you're not one of the man, that man's disciples, are you? No, he said, I am not because it was cold so it's like that yeah that's well i guess you're right like she didn't ask john because she already knew 
like they already knew who John was. And on top of that, he also had the affiliation with the high priest. But then she notices Peter. And, and I wonder what made him stand out. Was it his clothing? Was it his, like, what was it? The way he spoke? Like, I don't know. I was going to say, I think sometimes it's, people can see your heart. Because um, usually when I, I think about that scripture, I'm wondering if it were just a matter of, like, comparing Peter to John. Um, like it was said, John had no question about his devotion to the Lord. He had no question about, how his devotion, his faith towards the Lord was. Peter, on the other hand, was a little bit of a different story. More than likely, it could be even how you walk towards the gate, even probably reaching way too far. John probably walked to the gate strong, but Peter came a little, a little skittish, probably just like, oh my God, you know, uh, Jesus, I don't know. And, you know, it, it can be seen. I mean, I, that's just me probably speaking naturally because sometimes we see people and you just like, I don't know about this one right here. I don't know, but you see someone that walks and who they are, it could be something like that too. So just even piggybacking on that, maybe we're agreeing because like I said, it just, that, that thing just jumped out at me between John and Peter, but I even would say that uh, sometimes the moment calls, calls our identity out, but because Peter wasn't ready to live it out full well, mm -hmm. but also you got to remember Jesus taught him about this. Jesus gave him kind of insight. He gave him the answer to the quiz and said, yeah, you're going to fail this one. But you're going to, from this quiz that you fail, you're going to actually be the one that strengthens your brother. And as you were saying, Gio, that's why he was Ra, uh, the name that came up when he had that discourse about who the men said I am. Remember, Peter spoke up. Same thing with Peter on the boat. Uh, when they were on the boat and they were like, is this a ghost on the water? And Peter was the bold one to say, if it's Jesus, Jesus, if it's you, tell me to come out. Jesus tells him to come out. Peter came out and he walked on the water. Yeah, he sank. But you can't take away from Peter that this man actually walked, stepped out and walked on the water. So you can't really take that away. That's why I think it's the beauty of his journey. It, it's so beautiful, his journey, because he was the one that would step out. But then there the moment, the, there's a moment now that demands him to rise up. But at that point in his life or at that moment in his walk, he wasn't ready to answer it like how he did in the book of Acts. But Jesus already told him that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. As much as he wanted to fight it. And I like where you stopped that. This is only the first time he denied him. You know, there's two more times that come after this. He could have said, wait a minute. Is this the point that you, no, 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 no. I'm fighting this. Uh, 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 uh. My fault, my fault. I am, I am, I am. <laughs> I'm one of them. Yeah, 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 it's me. It's me. But the moment called for fulfillment. Sometimes the moment's going to come and it's like you got to answer the bell of the moment, just that moment. And sometimes in the real time, we fail. Other times in real time, we rise to the occasion. But that's why you, you've you got to really love the humanity, the push and the pull of the story of Peter's de of Peter's devotion, because you see it come back up again later on at the end of the book of John. I think that's good, man. I, I think I might have to like do a little side study about Peter. I never even thought about it, but that, that's actually a good, good idea just to see his growth. Peter's something else. We all got some Peter in us. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the reason why I yes. want to read it. <laughs> all got some Peter in us. <laughs> I'm going to read it too, Saka. No, it is Man. great. And actually, um, the story of Peter actually helped me out a lot, you know. And, uh, you know, I just find I find it amazing how, for me, you know, I, I love redemption. You know, and and, and he's a, a vivid picture of that. You know, he's called by God, you know. And, and Jesus like, I've prayed for you so your faith, your faith won't fail, man. And he's denied Jesus three times and all of that. And uh, he he leaves the pack, and then even after all that, after Jesus comes back resurrected, he's like, "All right, go get Peter." You know, tell everyone and Peter. And Peter ends up being like, as you said earlier, the one that be preaching the sermon. You know, and 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 three thousand getting saved and just impacting the the a lot of this New Testament that we read. You know, this came from a guy who had a moment of denial and 
you know, had all of that. And yet God used him mightily, you know, and as a church, we tend to put people out like that, you know, and write them off, you know, but God's like, nah, I, I got plans. My word still stands. And as you said that, bro, I think that, oh, it's, it's, that, that's amazing. That another thing that amazed me was that all oh, the difference the power of the Holy Spirit makes. Because he failed because he wasn't leaning on the voice that gave him the revelation in that moment of who Jesus was. Remember in Matthew, when he asked the question and he says, Who men say I am? And when Peter answers the question, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Remember Jesus' response. He said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. But my father, which is in heaven, you leaned on that voice to get the understanding. Now we see the contrast. He could have just leaned on the voice and just said, nah, nah, I'm down with him too. It's okay. I, I, I am. I'm one of them. But I really, really thoroughly believe Okay, go back to that very text where that happened. Just a few minutes after he gave the revelation and he heard about Jesus having to go through what he had to go through, Jesus, Peter turned around and rebuking Jesus for saying what he's saying. Because, no, 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 not, now he's leaning on the other side of what he was hearing because he had expectations of Jesus to overthrow the government and restore Israel to its proper place and its prominence. All the disciples had that expectation. So he started listening to the voice of his expectation. And now the same, instead of leaning on the voice and leaning on Christ, leaning on, on the Holy Spirit, you're like, uh, he, he goes back to the voice that that's in his head saying, this is the expectation. This is what Jesus supposed to do. Boom, bada, bing. But that was, it's just, and that's why I said, that's a beautiful contrast. It's whose voice you're leaning into. It's who, it's whose heart you're leaning into. Sometimes in the moment, because I know for me, there's been times where in my journey, I've not always leaned in on the voice of the Father. But the voice I was leaning into had good intent. Peter's intent of Jesus wasn't bad. You know, Jesus had leadership in him. Jesus had power in him. Jesus had an authority that wasn't shown in him before. But, you know, not veering too far, but in the moment when he started to deny him, nah, the, 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 this wasn't the spirit that, this was the spirit fulfilled. This was God's plan being fulfilled. But Peter wasn't leaning on the voice that gave him the revelation about who Jesus was to begin with. And that's why after everything happened, Peter was able to strengthen him because the power of the Holy Spirit, he leaned, started leaning back on that voice. And you see that at the end of the discourse that he has, that his devotion for Jesus starts coming through. When Jesus asks him, do you love me? I know we're jumping ahead, but do you see it now? It makes sense. It's putting all those things together. Oh, okay. Now that's why I agree with John. You know, what, what I'm saying. We all got a little bit of Peter in us if we're enough, if we're able to just be honest with ourselves about that. We're able to just say, yeah, there's times I lean on God's voice and then there's times I don't. And, and even though the other voice has good intent, it's not God's voice leading. So it's not going to lead me in, in a good path. That's my case. I say, if you'd like to give your life to Christ, please come up to the altar. <laughs> If you have some uh, some confessions you want to make unto the Lord right here, right now, is where you can build your altar. <laughs> I have a confession. That just messed me up. That's uh, my confession. Wow. The knowledge that you get from the old people is crazy. Well, my man. man said the old people. My man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My man, I'm going to need you to stop disrespecting your guests like that, all right? <laughs> Backslide that fast? You call everybody old. That's not disrespectful. <laughs> I call everybody old. As long as you're older than me, you're pretty much old in my eyes. That's a typical teenager's perspective. And, and exactly. I feel, I'm going to have to embrace it because when, once upon a time I was a teenager. <laughs> the exact same thing. The same thing. So now that you're on the other side, I'm on the other side of the bridge hearing it. I'm, I don't even feel as bad hearing it. But you're you're wilding. You you out here talking. Yo, ain't that crazy though? <laughs> like now now you look back and it's like, man, we just switched places, man. Yeah. Like <laughs> I think we're just in our I think we're just in our early thirties and mid thirties by the grace of God and near thirty. Yeah. You know, we, 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 we. Yo, five so years. Minute, you'll be here. <laughs> 
five years. One day. I got time, so I'm enjoying my time right now. I'm making all the jokes. So by the time <laughs> I get there, I can't do nothing about it. I just got to love it. So in the meanwhile, I'm going to make as much jokes as I can. I'll I be feeling old, man. Like when I talk to some of these young folks, just, just five years under, I'm like, I don't understand y'all. Like, I'm, I must be old. <laughs> as you were saying that, I think the issue was the thing that um, we always warned about in scripture. You see, the thing is, we have accessibility. You can be influenced by a sound, but if you're not discipled by the person that was given the sound, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have your own. And this is not always a bad thing because you're not gonna always be able to be in the room of some of the greats. I'm just thinking about when, of just you know, I know we done, Lord, we done read off the, the scripture. But I'm just thinking about how I was just thinking about how Chick Korea influenced so many people's sound, but he never, they never met him, but they met people that were influenced Ooh, by. You. That 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 helped to help their piano proficiency built up. I'm one of them. Now I wish I got a chance to meet him personally. I sure did. I have a couple of brothers that got to meet him when he was at the Blue Note in New York City a couple of years ago. I didn't get that opportunity, but his sound influenced the way that I played. I have a couple of pieces from him that I love. Crystal Silence, for example, not just Spain, but there's other couple couple other songs. Five Hundred Miles. This ain't for example. Um, but like now because accessibility is just like right there. You know, it, it low-key can preach and go back to the, the, the other side of the bridge where we were originally coming from, if you really think about it. Is it just because you have access doesn't mean you're going to do what you're supposed to do in the moment. You know, and and, and um, the, 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 the crazy thing is that you have access. We You can have access to certain artists. Look at PJ Morton's story, why I love him. I call him this generation Stevie Wonder, just saying, for example. But he did get a chance to have access to Stevie Wonder and collab with him. And really be a disciple by his sound. So you kind of see more similarities. You know what I'm saying? Um, you can be influenced, but you're not disciple. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> you can say that was Judas. He, he was influenced, but at some point, the discipleship journey stopped. But no, but seriously, it, it, it just, it, it, I think that was just socially, that was just, that's just my opinion. Because each of us wasn't really all the way directly or it was out there seeing you're pouring into somebody so they know how to carry on the sound but also still be relevant to their day you could still you can see nuggets of that where it happened and didn't happen just for example but it just goes back to <laughs> the, it really actually it actually really connects the bridge in an interesting way back to the original text of so I just want to make sure Gio, <laughs> he's, he's Gio, oh, that makes sense to you Gio <laughs> and he was like wait did that just really happen we found a way to connect back the bridge. Like, you, no, for real. You have like, to. You have That's to. You, have to. It, 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 yeah. it, it, you can be influenced but not disciples. Another sermon, another discussion for another day. Amen. That's, that's, yeah. that's great. Right but I really there. wanted to um piggyback off what you said, Brother Ryan, going back to um, what you said. Uh, that's very true. A lot of the, uh, not just youth, but this generation in general thing that you can easily just get to visa. You don't have to put hard work into it. Me, I'm blessed that I was um, raised in the Caribbean, so I was exposed to hardship, um, poverty, struggles at a young age. So I know what it's like to not have a clean water. You got to drink rainwater. <laughs> I did that from birth all the way to age nine. I didn't know what clean water was. <laughs> I never did it. <laughs> but all that struggle, I was exposed to that at a young age. So when I came over here, I already had that mindset, like, whatever you want, you got to make sure you work for it. That ain't gonna come easy to you, and especially like with this YouTube. I've been doing this this year going um September 20. Sorry for doing so close to the mic, but September 20 uh seventh. This year is gonna make six years of me doing this, and it's make six years of hard work, dedication, continue to pouring in. Even though I, I'm about to be six years in, I'm still not at the level I want to be at. But one thing I understand is that everybody's journey is different. Uh some journey may be shorter, some journey may be longer. My journey is going to be longer, but I know that in the end, all glory is going to go um, back to God. And somebody that uh, I wouldn't say I admire, but somebody like I pay attention to is Tyler Perry, because uh, I grew up in the older Medea move and his um, work. It took him eight years for one of his plays to get big, because remember, he started out doing play. Eight years of him spending money, doing production, rehearsing, casting, losing a lot because during that eight years he was filling all those plays 
So he not only losing time, but money. And he was homeless during that period. And on his eight-year mark, he finally hit it big. So with me, on my six-year mark, I'm like, he he had to do eight years. I could do I could do three more years. I, I could I could do five, six. Um hard work and dedication is something that is key because nothing nothing's gonna come easy. YouTube did not come easy. Um learning how to edit video did not come easy. Recording, uh having all the stuff that I have, even the setup that I have right now, it took me um a while to get this whole setup to where the audio could be better. Hard work and dedication is just something that's key and we all uh, I have to learn it because I, I already know that nothing's going to just be um, selected or just given to me easy. I got I to gotta work for every single thing I got. The the 4.07 GPA that I got right now, it wasn't something that came easy. I had to work for it. I had to study. I had to um, redo tests. I had to um, pay attention in class. If I got to participate and annoy everybody in class because they're telling me answer it, I'm going to do it because I care about my grade. But I know the hard work and dedication. Man, on that note, bro, I just want to, you know, just want to give you your flowers, man, while you can, your roses, while you can smell them, man. You know, you do an amazing job. You know, you're a light, you know, in this time. And, you know, it's a great thing that you're doing with the, you know, the podcast and the YouTube and all that, man. So, you know, keep doing what you're doing. You know, greater is to come. You know, that hard work, as you mentioned, it's, it's already paying off and it's going to pay off even more. You know, can't wait to see, you know, what else unfolds from it and, you know, how God takes this thing even further for you, man. We, we're just honored to be in, included in, um, you know, in these studies and these videos and the content that you create, man. And to God be the glory for that, because I made sure I was bringing glory right back to God, because this, yeah, 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 yeah. this was, um, don't, don't blow up. And forget about the little people. I, I, I tell you from, from the very first. Yeah, the old people. We're going to forget about the old people. The old, old people, yeah. <laughs> Don't forget about the old people when you blow up. Right? I, I ain't going to forget about you yeah, I made sure of that because you always tell me, I to make sure you remember everybody that came along with you. And I'm I'm going to do that. Uh, uh, And I'm going to make sure that I recognize myself too. Because I was one of the people that came along with me. Because I, I was a person that was motivating me and telling me, nah, you can't quit. Because it's been several times that I wanted to, like, stop doing YouTube. Several. And I just had to talk myself out of it because... And the main reason was it because of, like, the the slow process. That That's what was tripping me off. Not even, like, the hard work, just the slow process. I'm like, God, I've been doing this for a long time. Like, why, why ain't that, like, a thousand subscribers at least, like... 5,000 views or something like that. So that was tripping me. And I had a conversation with Brother Jave, and he was like, I don't remember what he said, but he spoke into me, and I was like, you tripping. I was like, you tripping. I, th I think I think you just tripping. realized that you had a Peter moment. Like, what what is your reason why? Right? Like, I told you from the first moment. Like, we, we spoke about this when we, when we said, I called you up. I was like, yo, I want to read the Bible with you and your brothers, right? I feel like the youth at our church are being yelled at and, and Jesus is being forced down their throats, but no one is actually taking the time to disciple you guys. So I said, all right, let's just start reading. And then you decide to do this YouTube thing. And I think it's great timing, right? Because now we, we're not bound by the four walls of the church, as Nate said earlier. Like now we can, you can sit in your bedroom and this word can get all the way to China, right? all the way across the other side of the world, but you have to remember your reason why. It's not the viewers, it's not the potential uh, monetary portion that comes from YouTube, you know, when you get a certain amount of viewers and everything, it's just you finding joy and sharing the word of God. The scripture, you, you, you might very well be a part of fulfilling a scripture that every heir has to hear the word of God. So when you find yourself being discouraged because you don't have the viewers and, and, and the likes and the followers, it's not even about that. If anything, you should be mad because like, yo, why are people not listening to the word of God? Like why are people aren't getting this message? Like I gotta, but just listen, you give the vessel to God and let him fill it up. Let him pour out into it. But you have to make yourself a willing and available vessel. It's not your ability, it's your availability. Don't get discouraged. Keep pushing. 
but make sure you push not out of your own strength, but out of the strength of God. You keep seeking him. And sometimes when you when you get on this call, I mean, when you, when you get on this, this meeting, I also want you to go and read the scripture yourself. And, and I know you're, you're just like you're new to it, but try to see what sticks out to you, too. And that, that's the reason why I stripped you. I stripped you from reading the scripture because you're just you'll read it. OK, guys, what does that say? What does that mean? No, nah, I want you to hear. Right. Your faith is going to come by hearing the word. So I want you to take your time. I want you to read it yourself too and see what stuck out to you. Come next week with questions. Come next week with, okay, this was stuck out to me. This is for your soul salvation too. This is for your faith to be built up. I look, 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 I don't, I have no idea how long everybody in this chat, ha, like how long they've been saved and how long they've been reading the Bible and how, but if you put all the time together, you obviously see they see that we still have questions. We didn't know everything that we read. It's a journey. It's a process. Keep pushing, bro. All right. And I want you to change your, your, your perspective on this call. I want you to look at this call as a time for you to grow and then have your quote unquote future viewers have them watch you grow and hope that the light that Ryan said you're being and you're becoming would, would cause them to want to grow with you, that you encourage them, other people, your viewers to grow. So timing is everything. It might not be right for you to have all these viewers because then you'll feel the pressure. Like you said, I got to post every week. I got to keep going. Like what's your motive behind posting every week? You have to ask yourself that question. Is it for the viewers? Is it for, or is it for Christ? I appreciate that word, but like, I know my motive um, now. My motive has always been to speak to the people. Always. Um, from the day I started, even though I started off doing motivational um, speaking, that's what the original content that I led into doing my little comedy things and story times and a bunch of other things that I went in. And once I got into the Christian content, I'm like, I love this. I, I love preaching. So I, I just couldn't continue um, to do it. And that's actually a good point that you made up. I never really thought about, you know what, let me read it. Let me um, ask some, get up some questions, like stuff like that. I never really picture it like that. I just picture what I would say is like, yo, we're going to get in this call. We're going we gonna to learn about the scripture, get knowledge. Uh, who watches the video is going to receive that knowledge. And I didn't look at it from that different lens. And that's why I'm so thankful for my brothers because they give me um, stuff from a different lens that I may not look at and and i'm actually thankful that i'm not blessed with that big the big platform yet because i know it's mistakes i gotta make it's stuff that i gotta learn um and those stuff will be necessary for when i get to that point because I, I don't want i don't want that spotlight right now yeah i'm not i'm not i'm not built yet right now for it but i will be eventually as i continue to grow so thank you so much for that word and just just one more thing and then we'll wrap up because it's time far spent but in the event that you don't get to that platform where you have millions of viewers <clears throat> the four viewers that you have now the people on the call you could very well just be doing us a service you're waking people up out of their beds on a saturday at eight o'clock in the morning and I, every, every week I get on this thing, I'm like, where is he finding these people? These people are crazy. Why are they waking up at 8 o'clock in the morning <laughs> on a Saturday? Like, this is the only day I get to sleep in. I wake up every morning with bags on my eyes. I'm like, oh, I got to do this call. But every, every Saturday when I leave, I'm like, I'm glad I woke up. I'm glad I got on a call. I'm glad I pressed my way through. So you may not get the million. But as long as you get the one, two, three, or four that you get on this call and you're a blessing to them and we can bless you so that your faith is, is strengthened, then that's fine. So I want you to pray. You're going to pray out today. And, and, and I want you to shift your focus. All right. Any closing remarks before he prays out, gentlemen? I do. I got a quick one. Um, I think, yo, Gio, that was, I, I hope this gets caught because that, my thing is, this is the discipleship that I think 
many a man yearned for live in time um that was that moved that moved me that was good i'm listening and i'm reading the text still and i'm reading and i'm looking and i'm, I'm listening and i'm like yo this is actually what discipleship in real time is is about so do, don't just be influenced only take the discipleship journey as it is as ron you're on a good path um whether you get there or not i believe you have listen youtube has the capabilities where you got <laughs> Negroes that that is just in the search engine. <clears throat> if they just put up John 20, John 19, John 18, where you've been reading from is gonna come up. You never know. Um, so you 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 stick to it. And I love that you're doing that. But I want I want to encourage you, don't miss the moments of discipleship that's happening. And I would encourage any other viewer, if you have somebody in the faith, like my bro Gio. That will just want to make sure help make the navigation a little clearer. Um, listen to those voices. They're they're they God's echo. What you just saw just now was literally God's echo, and, and literally I know that because He's telling you go to God. I'm just gonna echo what He says, but go find the root sound wave. Go find go find the heart of God, Ezra, and that that's powerful. So I want every listener, I know it's gonna go on YouTube, but if I if this part I can just throw in there, if you have voices like that, and if you don't have a voice, brothers and sisters, get, get you some people that love the Lord and want to see Christ formed in you. So it's both not only just Ezra, but also to like the Geo and the Jave that does commit more, much more weekly. We, me, John, and Ryan, we like bi-weekly or special guests, or where you want a little paprika, on the YouTube view, <laughs> we want a little extra seasoning, you know. If you, yeah, we that's what we're here for. But those guys that are part of this morning of life now, I just want to encourage y'all to and bless y'all. Um, keep on going and keep growing. The discipler also grows too, so keep on going and keep growing. And I just wanted to encourage y'all that. That I just want to let that know. I didn't. I need to vocalize it, whether we record it or not. That blessed my socks off. Keep that going. Not I, I concur 100 percent I was sitting here the same thing, Nate. I was like, like that, that was that was food for my soul right there. That was that was inspiring. And you know, um as as Gio met, you know, getting up uh Saturday morning, you know, like man, dude, this it put me in alignment, you know. So I I, I think you, you know, set me in my proper place, you know, so that I can have my time with God right here, right now, you know, and it would have been something else. But God wanted it to be right now. He knew, you know, he ordained it. He knows everything. I was supposed to be right here, eight o'clock on this line, you know, with you guys. So I thank you for that. You know, you, you, you're doing that, man. You are being a vessel. And uh, as Nate also said, man, ch cherish that, that you have, you know, with, you know, with Gio, man, cherish that, hold on to that foster that you know protect that you know um because that's that's what was done for me you know throughout my as you're 17 years old my goodness man i remember that, those years the best times of my life and you know having people you know around in my life to be able to to mentor me push me teach me guide me correct me all of that you know sometimes i didn't i didn't appreciate it you know as much as i do now you know in retrospect like, you know what some stuff that they told me back then, I'm like, yo, he was right, you know? So, man, hold on to that. I only got one last word, I guess, for all of us, and even to Ezron, uh, too, and even to, well, like I said, all of us, we're builders. Um, I know we were talking about a few minutes ago, you know, the difference between even like a five year difference between us and those underneath us. I always say this, and this is probably going to sound controversial, but I think it's true. Each generation is what we built it to be. And I always hear, you know, sometimes, you know, we hear our elders say, I don't know what's wrong with young people. Well, you conceived us. You conceived us. Um, and we are what you taught us to be. And um, I take that even from a spiritual perspective, you know, our elders in the church. What's wrong with these young people? You conceived us. We are who you built us to be. 
And the encouragement has to be that if we want to see strong Christians, we have to build them ourselves. We have to be built and we have to continue to build. And I just echo everything that Ryan and Nathan said, even encouragement to Gio and Jave, continue to disciple, but even more so as Ron, take the challenge. Don't just be built, build others, build others as well. Hard work is not something that's brand new to each generation. You can pass that down. Uh, dedication is not something that everyone has to learn on their own. You can pass that down. And the thing is, I think that we keep missing across the board is the link of relationship and more so in the spirit as far as the church or even Christianity, the, the building of discipleship. So um, that becomes the disconnect. So we'll, we'll build this. So build, be built, and, and be repairs of the breach. That's what we're called to. So that's that's my last two cents. Yes, I like to say thank you. Thank you so much for all the brothers that I have over there. Thank you for your time. Thank you for letting God use you today. And thank you for the wisdom and the advice. Uh, very much appreciate it. And I know this journey is going to be long, but I have so many people around me that I'm able to learn from that I'm able to go to advice. And thank you guys so, so much for that. And I love you guys today. Now, guys, we're going to be diving into the ending prayer for today, which will be done by me. If you can, just bow your heads and close your eyes. Father God, I thank you. I praise you. I worship you, God. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, who is our provider, God. I thank you for my words today. For us to come together to discuss your word, to iron, to be able to sharpen the iron, for wisdom to be able to be speak, spoke into the atmosphere, for thoughts, for ideas, for questions to be able to be flowed and be able to answer through you, Father God. I thank you so much for this platform that I have where I'm able to use my gift and talent and have my brothers along with me to be able to preach to your people, God. I pray that I never get discouraged by the amount of views, the amount of likes, anything that comes to you too, God. I pray that I continue to keep my focus on you, God. Keep my focus on the target, God, and continue to build myself up as I build the people around me up, God. I just pray that you continue to be a blessing into each and every single body life that's in this Zoom call right now and that's watching, God. I pray that you continue to be with us, God. I pray that the word for today will reside with us as the week go by, God. We pray that we won't deny you three times like Peter did, God. We pray that we'll always acknowledge you, always show you and always tell you how worthy you are, how holy you are, how mighty you are, that you are Jehovah, God. We pray in this upcoming week that you continue to guide and protect everybody under your blood, God. We pray for healing. We pray for strength for anybody that's watching that's going through some God. We just pray that you cover them and bless them in your hand, God. In Jesus, in your holy name, God, we love you. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. 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 <clears throat> This is it for the video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for coming back. This is the end of Bible study episode 38. In two weeks, we'll be hitting um, 40, 40 weeks of continue to do this, 40 weeks of God continuing to talk, I mean, speak through us and just continue to flow and continue to dwell into the word. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, like, and see you guys next week for another episode of Bible study from all of us. <music>